Hello again everybody, the Cargos here, and today I'll be giving you a brief but informative tutorial in the creation of a Minecraft multiplayer server. Yes, this tutorial does work for all versions of the game, including beta, so don't worry about this video's posting date. Essentially, if you're at all part savvy about computers and gaming in general, then you should have no problem setting up your server and playing with your friends in just a matter of minutes. Even if you're not that technically savvy, this tutorial could help you out a great deal in the process. A few requirements you will need include a legitimate copy of Minecraft, I don't support torrents, the multiplayer server software from Minecraft, and a computer with an internet connection. Wireless or wired will do just fine. This whole process should take no more than 15 minutes, so let's get started. Start by clicking on the Windows icon on your desktop and clicking on the search bar. In here, you'll type cmd.exe. Okay? You should get a little black box that says CMD. This is also known as the command console for your Windows computer. Go ahead and click on the result. The command line should come up on screen. If you're freaking out at this point and have no idea what you're getting into, don't worry. What we're doing won't damage your computer so long as you don't begin rambling in random commands that I don't tell you. So go ahead and type in ipconfig. I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G. Okay? And now, press enter. A paragraph of options will come up showcasing a lot of detail and numbers. What we're interested in, however, is the IPv4 address. Do not get this confused with the IPv6 address, which is significantly longer. Go ahead and write down the IPv4 address as you see it above. It will start with something like 192.168. blah 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 blah. And you should find that address underneath wireless LAN adapter, wireless network connection. As soon as you have that written down, go ahead and close the window. Now, for our next step, open up your internet browser. This can be Google Chrome, Safari, Mozilla Firefox, or Internet Explorer. Personally, I prefer Mozilla Firefox because I think it makes downloading things easier. But any of these will work just fine. In the address bar, type in Minecraft.net. Once you landed on the home page, go down to this image here. Go down a little bit more, and you'll see download. Then, being in the downloads page, click Minecraft server.exe. Go ahead and save it to your computer. You can save it to your desktop or any other desired location. It really doesn't matter. Once the file is fully downloaded, create a folder on your desktop entitled Minecraft Server. So, go ahead and minimize that. And minimize that. Now, go here. New folder. Call it Minecraft Server or whatever you prefer to call it. But for ease of access, I'm just going to call it Minecraft Server. Once created, find your downloaded file and drop the file you just downloaded inside that folder. So take Minecraft Server.exe, drop it into that new folder. Once you're done with this, 
you can close the folder that the file is inside. So, we're all set now. We're nearly done. Only two more steps are left in the process of creating your server. However, this next step can be a bit tricky for most people, but it's not difficult. Just pay attention to the steps I show you and you'll have no problem. Whenever you have a multiplayer game that uses an internet connection, like Minecraft, you'll have to run the game through what's called a port. This is basically an access road through your router and onto the internet. Minecraft uses one port numbered 25565. That's the entire number. All you have to do is make sure this port number is open for Minecraft to use, which can be done in less than a minute through your wireless router. This process is called port forwarding. To do this, open up your browser again. Now, before I go any further, this process applies to everyone on a wireless router, but not every brand of router is exactly the same. For example, I'm using a Netgear router. I can make changes to this router by using the address 192.168.1.1. However, this is different for different brands of routers, such as Belkin or Linksys. If you don't have Netgear, don't worry. Just Google how to port forward on your router to find out how to do this next step. But the process I'm about to show you is almost the same for all routers. The only difference is you'll have to enter a different number to access your specific router. Also, you should know your sign-in information, meaning your username and password. If you don't know your sign-in information, then ask your parent or guardian. So let's continue. Once you've entered your router through the internet browser, you'll have a ton of options on screen. What you want to look for is port forwarding, usually listed by itself on the front page or under applications and gaming. Mine is under port forwarding slash port triggering, so I'm going to click that tab. What you want to do is create a custom service or call the new service and give it a name. I would say make it simple and call it Minecraft Server. For the protocol, you want to make sure that TCP slash UDP is listed. Some routers say both. That basically means this right here. You want to make sure that the starting port and the ending port are both 25565. Again, 25565. Now, for the server IP address, you want to enter in the information that you wrote down earlier about your IPv4 address. As soon as that's done, click Apply. So now, you should have your new service created. Now that you're all set up for port forwarding, we're going to go back to our desktop, and we're going to reopen the Minecraft folder from earlier. Go ahead and open up the file that you downloaded. Once again, called minecraftserver.exe. Once this opens, you may need to click run if it's warning you about a valid signature. The window will run and generate a few files inside of the folder you placed it in. These are necessary, so don't delete them. There should be five or six that generate. This server file is what turns a server on and off. Every time you want to play with your friends, go into this folder and click on the file to open it.
it will start up the server and your friends can then join. You don't want to run this all the time though because it uses up the internet and computer memory. So you don't want to put that strain on your computer 24-7. Only start up the server when you want to play with your friends. Now this last part is very important. Your server is now set up and you're all ready to play online, but you need a way for your friends to join. Here's what you do. Open up your internet browser again. And what you're going to do using Google, Bing, or any other preferred search browser, type in IP chicken and click on the first link. You're going to write down the numbers you see. This is what is called your external IP address. It is very important you keep this number secure and only give it to friends you want to play with in Minecraft. Now all your friends have to do is take that IP address, get on their game, go to multiplayer, and enter it in, the one you got from IP Chicken. At this point, you should be all set up to play Minecraft online with all your friends and host your very own server. In conclusion, this is the first part of making a server that you want to be private. If you want to go public, you'll want to install plugins which will give people controlled permissions, protect players property or buildings including your own creations, make a jail and have a server logger, and more. Plugins are to ensure players won't have a free-for-all and destroy your server. In addition, they can maximize a player's experience and enjoyment on your server. I will be posting a video next week about permissions. I'll be teaching you about the easiest one out there. Stay tuned. Please leave a like and a comment if this video helped you. And if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to answer it individually. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I will see you all next time.